Stress causes 99% of disease. It is something that can deteriorate our body. We cannot be aware of it, and it is difficult to trace, track, or be aware of. This is something that you can notice it usually sometimes in the midst of it but i definitely feel like that's something that's like kind of a hindsight or once you're in a space where you can relax it's like oh wow that's what i've been dealing with like i've just been stressed like all of these pressures and stress can come from a variety of sources so this morning i had a dream and in this dream childish gambino was like standing over my bed and for whatever reason he was my grim reaper and was just like wow latia it's basically your time. I mean, you can get it together, but like, it's time. And it was just like, what's doing this to me? And it was like stress and anxiety. Didn't you know? And it was just like, oh, that makes sense. And I don't think we had like an actual conversation, but that's like the gist of like the exchange that we had, where like by the end of it, I was just like, ah, oh, stress and anxiety is killing me. That's that feeling that I have of discomfort when I'm sitting at my desk and I feel like I'm just messing everything up, even though I'm literally just sitting there. That feeling of being watched and having no escape from the creeping eyes of the people that I work with because they are too worried about what I'm doing with my life and time and not just doing their darn jobs. And it's that feeling of just discomfort when I'm out in public from time to time and I end up chugging drink after drink instead of just like chilling, feeling at ease, shaking off the tension, being present. So it manifests in different ways for different people and I know that like for myself I've been dealing with a lot of stress anxiety tension just not wanting to do much of anything lately um it's as though my life is like lackluster and like the sheen and fun has gone it shows up in different little moments but it's like it's not consistent and it's not like as impactful as it usually is and so, I mean, I guess like a damper on things is also a little bit of what's going on. And I don't believe that I'm the only one. And I don't say that like in a haughty way or even in a happy way, because I don't want people to feel this way where it's like, I'm a little bit down, everything's a little lackluster. I just wanna sleep, I don't wanna go to work, I don't wanna do anything. And I do wanna do things, but I just like, Whenever it comes to sitting and being like, oh, what are we gonna do? It's just like, let's let's just go to sleep and do nothing. I just don't feel like I have much of the energy. I'm a bit overloaded by all the changes I've been making in my life. And I'm just like, I just need a touch point of comfort for a bit as I like figure out like, what do I really need? I'm Latia, hello. And I'm a data engineer. I'm yeah i'm a data engineer it's not my title at work but like that's basically what i do kind of sort of in a way um i'm very analytical i like to think i also like art pole dancing very active things a variety of interests and um right now stress and anxiety just came up in a dream that i had this morning and it's something that i've been looking into and researching for years and as i think about it it's like <sighs> that is one of the biggest challenges that we deal with. And it's something that we don't always realize is causing us problems because it's it's like um almost like a silent killer, but it's like if we look at the things that happen in our lives, it might be a little more obvious. But at the same time, like I didn't live with parents who would talk about how stressed they were necessarily. Like they would say things like money is funny, money is tight, things are difficult, but like it just feels like those are parts of life and you just keep it moving. So my mom would even be like, oh yeah, like it's sad if my partner and I split up and I keep it moving. Like I, I got stuff to do. I can't just sit around crying over you. Like that's not how I roll. And while it, I admire the strength that she had and how she would keep going through anything, it's also challenging when we do have those emotions and we need to grieve and there's no role model for it. So my dad would cry more than my mom, but my dad would also like cry under different circumstances. So it's like having interesting emotional stances um, and the way people handle them because like sometimes stress and emotions can go hand in hand. Sometimes they don't. Um, 
I know what I've learned in recent times is that, especially from be breaking the habit of being yourself, is that what happens is something happens, it triggers an um, emotional response and a chemical response in our bodies. So when this happens, it's like a mixture of chemicals and sensations and feelings, and it kind of gets like warped together. So that feeling might be anxiety. So what happens is like trigger anxiety, and then all of a sudden it keeps happening and then your body gets addicted to a certain level of anxiety. So it's like, now I need this much anxiety to function. And then you keep getting that level of anxiety and all of a sudden it gets higher because like you get numb to it. So then you need a little more anxiety. So it's like we create our own dramas and sagas that we play out. And so it's like, it's fractionally on us that we respond to things that we respond to in the way that we respond. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People goes over it where we are response able, where it's R-E-S-P-O-N-S-E -S -E able, like we are able to choose our response and like take that moment and determine how will I respond to this trigger. Also, there's like an element of addiction and um, brought in by Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza, where it's like, if your body is used to a certain state of stress, of certain state of tension, of frustration, whatever feelings that get triggered for you most often, now you have to like identify those emotions and be aware of it. And then you also have to like, for his method is like um, meditation. If you can meditate on it, you can unlearn that learned response. And then after that, you can instill different habits in place of it so that you can start getting rid of it. So now that gives you like some control over your emotional state. Um, seven habits talks about being proactive and honoring like your ability to choose a response and like kind of lowering it that way. So basically at the end of the day, most personal development says we are responsible for the way that we feel. I am responsible for my feelings, choices, actions, the life that I am living, all of it. My perception of it is within my control. And as I change my perception, I can change my reality. Um, and also in Breaking the Habit, he talks about how um, your personal reality is shaped by your personality. So it's like personality, personal reality, like all of it's within our control. And as we learn to take steps to master that and be in control of it, that's as we like gain those feelings of control and feeling more autonomous. And um, Brendan Burchard has the motivation manifesto where he goes over this, where he talks about um, how all we want is personal freedom. Like everything that we do is so that we can be in control of our personal reality, our agendas, how we honor time, what we're accomplishing in life, what we say yes and no to. And so it's like, when we aren't feeling in control of our lives, that can lead to stress. When there's too many bills and not enough money, that can lead to stress. When there's too much demand on us and we're just not feeling equipped to handle it, that can create stress. Like there are so many different ways in which we can get stressed out, especially in this day and age of knowledge information where it's what you know and who you know, plus what you think about things and your perception and how creative you are. It's like we're in this position where we're pulled in multiple directions and expected to be great at everything. And it's just like, we're still human. There's still like a learning curve. There's still like a level of um, repetition that's needed for some things to stick. And it feels unreasonable at times that we can expect ourselves to change on a dime and do this because it's like, it takes time for habits to stick in a change in perspective and yeah like sometimes people have those breakthrough moments and that aha where it's just like everything makes sense and I'm a completely new person and I've done nothing but I will do all the things I need to do and that's amazing and that's a lot of pressure where some people need to read the book twice and then they'll do the exercises some people need a little more time to let things soak in or be aware sometimes like yeah I started a new job moved to a new, well, not a new city, but I started a new job, moved across the country, moved in with someone, moved out with someone, and my job is changing. And like, just a lot of other things. So I've gone through at least two or three major life moves within the last like eight months, with the last year. 
and it's like oh makes sense i might be stressed plus add in personal training plus coaching plus all the ideas that we have around habits that i can create or shift and then it's a recipe for just like overload and overwhelm it's like i'm trying to do too much and i don't even remember who i was to start and now i'm just like lost in the sauce of like i should do this but i want to do that and it's just like or let's let's just say no to everything for a little bit clear the mind give myself some space and then like move forward because like sometimes it just takes a reset and a refresh but sometimes we just need people to reflect back our stress and frustration and i'm also there too because i'm not the happiest camper like i am and moments but overall i'm just it's rough <laughs> but um share this with someone you think may benefit comment if you're curious to learn more about ways to handle it or ways signs of it because um stress can like show up in different forms and like it if you like it let me know what's up and have a wonderful day see you next time